Right, in this segment, we're going to be discussing market flow and, and how the market moves in, in waves. And it's important to know the, the momentum of the market, uh, to know, um, you know which way it's likely to go and, and to be able to form your bias. So we're, we're going to be discussing three concepts here, um, the concept of impulse, um, correction and reversal. Uh, now, the impulse move is, is the main move of the market. Um, that is uh, the direction that the market wants to go in. This often people refer to this as a trending market when it's when it's in an impulse and the moves are you know quite fast and uh, you can you can clearly see the market going in, in a certain direction. Uh, then you have the correction or sometimes known as uh, the consolidation. Uh, where the market just has to build up its orders again, um, refuel for, for the next move up. And then we, we're also going to look at some at reversals. Key points, uh, the market will form a reversal and then it'll turn around going to the other side. Now, like I said, this is, this is just a very simple re uh, representation of the market um, and the market will move in these waves impulsively and correctively, impulsively and correctively. And uh, you're going to uh, need to know where you are in the market uh, to make your decision. But the market is also fractal, which means it, these, this is one, one big wave, but this wave can actually be broken down into smaller sub waves. And I'll show you guys what I mean. So uh, on this diagram, uh, you guys can, can see we, we still have the main impulse and correction wave. So this main wave can be subdivided into smaller waves and taking a chapter from the Elliott wave theory, uh, the market normally moves in five waves um, impulsively and then three waves correctively. And this main wave, like I say, can be subdivided into five wave, waves, which is also made up out of impulses and corrections. Uh, as such. So on the smaller time frame, we have the impulse, correction, impulse, correction, impulse. Although this whole move is still part of one bigger impulse. Uh, so it's going to gonna matter on which time frame you're looking at. And, um, you know, that's that's going to be your bias for which way the market is, is, is going to go, is uh, knowing where you are exactly in the cycle. And uh, that can even be broken down further. Even, you know, those waves can be broken down into smaller impulsive and corrective waves. And uh, we're going to be working with different time frames, you know, at least three different time frames when you analyze the market. And it's important to know, you know, where you are, you know, from a from an impulse or corrective point of view, uh, so you can form your bias uh, to know which way the market is most likely going to go next. Yeah. So um, if you, if you break that down even further, this is a you know this is quite a complex little structure here. Uh, this is one impulse wave broken down into all the smaller waves. Um, you know, we're not we're not going to be too concerned with the numbering um, as, you know, the Elliott wave traders are. Uh, we just want to concentrate on getting uh, the structure of the market um, correct and, and knowing if we're in the impulse or, or the correction. But I, I do need you guys to understand that big waves are subdivided into smaller waves. Just looking at this one, I've, I've marked here, yeah, this was the, the main impulse wave, but that can be broken down into an impulse, correction, impulse, correction, impulse. And obviously, you know, the smaller corrections can also be broken down. Uh, so that's just the concept I want you guys to understand. So let's, let's quickly look at a chart um, to see an example of, of uh, these impulsive and corrective moves. Now, this is a Euro USD daily chart, and we're going we're gonna to be discussing these um, patterns in, uh, in the next chapter. But we had this big bull run uh, from 2017 up until 2018 on the Euro dollar a one year bull run and this was a big impulsive wave. But as you guys can see there, I've, I've broken it down into smaller um, you know, structures. Uh, we have, this would, would have counted as our first impulse wave and this whole structure here would have counted as our correction. Then the third wave, which is normally the longest one, um, you know, was the, was the next impulse. And then we again had a little bit of a correction and then an impulse. So yeah, this was this was the largest structure of, of the um, you know of, of the euro dollar, but that can even be broken down um, smaller. As you guys can see, uh, this market shot up here and then had a consolidation. This also counts as a as a correction, had the move up and then the correction. And and just looking at at the momentum in the market, you can clearly see that the market is is bullish. Uh, you know, it takes only a few candles to go up and then many candles to correct, and then a few candles to go up and then many candles to correct. And that'll give you an idea of, of the momentum uh, in the market. And then uh, we'll teach you these uh, smaller corrections, or these uh, corrective patterns, um, so you can identify potential reversal zones and, and form your bias. So yeah, I quickly wanna just uh, zoom into this third wave, uh, uh, sorry, this fourth wave correction over here, and we'll quickly see uh, what the market 
looks wise, looks like structure wise uh, in that area. So this is this is that fourth wave correction, um, which we identified as a corrective pattern or a correction in the bigger trend. But inside this move, uh, if you if you zoom in on this time frame, um, now we got our impulse moves to the downside. So this is more your impulse move, and then it corrects, and then it makes an impulse to the downside, and it corrects. So yeah, this is what I mean by the market is fractal. Even though you know the main impulse is to the upside, if you break it down, you can actually find you know uh, impulse and corrections um, to the other side uh, in in this wave of of the bigger um, wave. So yeah, just looking at the candles here, yeah, as you guys can see, we got one big candle down and then a lot of candles up, which means the impulse is down. And then we had the big move down and then it forms this corrective pattern. And then it does move up, forms a bit of a correction, and then as the big move down again. So as you guys can see there, the momentum is clearly to the downside, has a bit of a, a reversal here, and then suddenly the market shoots up and now it's correcting to the downside. And this, this is our shift in momentum. Um, and now it, it breaks to the upside and then it has this long correction again. So this was the, the start of the final wave of that structure we were looking at. And this is at the end of this, this whole correction. And you guys can clearly see here where the momentum started to shift. And this is obviously when you would be switching your bias. You know, this, this concept might take a little while to, um, for you guys to, um, uh, to grasp fully. Um, but that's what the trading room is for. You know, we're going to be we're going to be posting our setups there, you know, every day. Um, so in the next couple of months, you guys can can follow us and start to get a feel of, of how the, you know, the market flow works. Uh, so, you know, if you're on the right side of the market and if the market is, you know, busy with a correction or an impulse and uh, that's going to help you, um, you know, form your bias and decide which way you want to you want to be taking trades. All right. And uh, now the next thing I want to discuss is, is structure and, and structure breaks. So when the market is is trending or moving in a direction, uh, for instance, this is a, a bullish uh, imp impulsive move, uh, the market will print higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows, higher highs. And then when it's ready for the reversal, it'll form some sort of reversal pattern. And then we have the impulsive move to the downside, breaking the previous low and printing a lower low. This is what we call a break in market structure. And this is also gonna be a good sign for you uh, to form your bias um, that the momentum is shifting. Because how this works is is we had buyers stepping into the market over here and then you know the sellers try to push the, the market down. Buyers stepped up higher, it, it pushed the price up and then the sellers try to try to push it down. Buyers stepped into the market and then the sellers started pushing it down and this pushed it beyond the point of where the last buyers were. And, and that's the important part, which means these buyers that were buying this move all the way up have now possibly been exhausted because they, they're not sitting at the same place they were they were buying at earlier. Uh, and this is a clue that uh, momentum might be changing. So yes, if it, if it breaks the low year, that's what we call the structure break. And then, you know, you can switch your bias and then you can start looking for corrections and impulses to the downside. All right, so uh, let's see how we can use that or what that looks like on a chart. I've got the USD JPY uh, on a four hour chart and uh, currently the market printed a high over here, made a low, printed a lower high, made a lower low. So this market is, is, is trending down currently and the structure is, is still in place. Moving a little bit forward now, we see that the market shot up and took this last high where the last sell, you know, the last um, bearish move um, started and, and the sellers were. Uh, which means now we've broken the structure to the upside and, and this is a, uh, a bullish sign for us. And moving a little bit forward, uh, this market actually then got into a nice trend. And as you guys can see, it kept on printing higher highs, higher highs, and these highs kept on holding, which means the structure was staying in place. Uh, so as long as uh, these, these lows are holding, uh, then you know your bias is to the upside and uh, you won't be looking for shorts just yet. All right, moving on to the next slide. This was the first change in momentum uh, where the market finally broke to the downside. And here we have our bearish break in market structure. Then the market continues lower, printing a lower high, continues lower, prints a lower high. And then we got a bit of a bullish move taking out the last, um, last lower high. And uh, this again, now it's a, it's a break in market structure. So you could be look, you, your, your bias would change and you would be looking for longs at, at this stage in, in, in time. Then the market prints a lower, a higher low and prints also a higher high, so the structure is still in place. But then the market comes down and actually breaks these lows 
and this is uh, sort of looking a bit bearish now and uh, your structure is to the downside currently market prints a lower high so structure is still in place and then the very next candle the market actually spikes these lows when the market just spikes lows though we don't consider that as a break in market structure the market has to clearly trade beyond that point uh, to show that there's there's no more buyers or sellers at that level and in this example here the market traded straight through it and bounced and rejected which means there was still some buyers sitting at that level and in fact uh, we did discuss the concept of liquidity with you guys and this could very well just be a run for liquidity and if if uh, the market took those um, stops over there it's more likely now that it would be going to the other side but the market is the structure is still to the downside we haven't broken any highs yet um, so you, you can't switch your bias yet but looking at that stop run or that run on liquidity uh, you'll be looking for signs uh, that the market might turn around all right the very next slide we we got the big impulsive move and we break the market structure we took out all three of these eyes and the market clearly is trading above that now so again bullish break in market structure especially after this run of li on liquidity and now you would have a, you would have a bullish bias and you would be looking for long trades market comes down prints a, prints a higher low market prints a higher low again and then it has this uh, big uh, consolidation uh, where it sort of moves in this range for a little bit but it prints another higher high uh, so the market structure is still intact next slide the market breaks to the downside breaking market structure and that is a that is a bearish sign and then actually continues going lower further um, yes again we're gonna we're gonna be covering uh, this concept more in the in the trading room uh, but this is what we're talking about when we're talking about market structure and that's a great tool uh, for uh, you know deciding uh, your bias and for figuring out uh, which way you want to be trading in the market uh, this will all become a bit more clear once we you know put the whole trading plan together in, in uh, module seven or eight i think um, but for now um, just just take a note of market structure and see how it influences um, the direction of the of the market flow